a what's the name of the movie? The last duel. <laughs> the last duel. Yeah. The last duel. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite interesting. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's interesting because of the the three different viewpoints. Oh yeah. yeah. Jack, yeah. Jack's Jane and, and the girl. Yeah. Which which got which kind of, sometimes got a bit repetitive, but yeah. I think it adds. It's well, some it's kind some of overlap. like old style storytelling as well, yeah. 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 Mm. There's some overlap, but, but there's some subtleties, obviously. Yeah. yeah, you know, like a little bit different. So you yeah. kind of pick up on the differences. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's not like uh, it's more complicated than what it appears to be. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, after the first chapter, you say, oh, okay. But then, we saw the other, the story from the other person. Yeah, different yeah. angles. Yeah. And there were so, actually discrepancies yeah. because in when, you know how they, he sues for the fact that a piece of property that used to belong to Marguerite yeah, yeah. Was, a, was supposed to be promised to Jean de Carcourge upon marriage. Yeah, dowry, dowry. When, yeah. yeah, when... The father, Robert de Thibault, um, he had to sell it because he was forced to for rent. Mm. Um, and then when they make up by going to Crispin's um, celebration for the birth of their son, yeah. the first storyline, which is from the point of view of Jean de Carrouge, yeah. he is the one that is apparently so gallant and, oh. and, and humble in saying... Um, <laughs> Yes, let us let servants of the king not quarrel. While his recollection is that um, Jacques is the one that goes here, here, and then in Jacques' recollection, he's the one who says the line of. So they they all they always think better of themselves, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, then, then in the her recollection, yeah. neither of them say the line, but it's in the background and it's assumed to be Crespin himself who says, "Let not servants of the king quarrel," and it sort of fits in with the glimpses of of people's character yeah. um that you see throughout all three storylines that crispin is the more conciliatory one and it's the people around who say he he like people think of themselves better than they are yeah, yeah i think that's, that's what i case. found kind of interesting it it wasn't just oh. like repetitive it it was kind of repetitive but it was also slightly different yeah and you have so, to sort of like look for the the differences, I guess, that's so what is, makes it interesting. This is a classic non-linear narrative. That the husband wasn't very caring. That was uh, portrayed in the other two uh, stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So John, in the first chapter, seemed like he was caring, <laughs> more yeah. caring. And then, but from the point of view of even the wife herself, right? He's a very rough man. And I think she nails it. He seems to only care for himself, his ego, his pride and vanity, uh -huh. more than the fact that he cares for her. When he hears the news of the rape, instead of going, he, number one, goes, are you telling the truth? He doesn't believe her. And when he comes to the conclusion that she is and must be telling the truth instead of going are you okay blah 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 um he sort of says why must this man continue to do evil to me and i'm like excuse me he raped your wife i'm sure he wronged her first but in those days women were treated as property yeah, yeah, yeah. they were which is uh, exactly what which is which is why the mom said it. the clergy yeah. and the guy goes uh, the the guy goes well rape is not a crime for it is not against a woman for mm. it is a crime of theft and pos wrongful possession of a husband you know the guardian something that must be under the guardianship of men you know treating mm. women as chattels and uh, I really don't want to be recorded, but, you know, here we are because you always have to record everything. The thing that incensed me, I guess, is the truthfulness of the whole male and female dynamic historically. And I wish I could say that we have moved way beyond that. But 
um, I have heard so many stories and I'm not going to relate to you the actual evidence because we're being recorded. But if we weren't, I would like to share some things, but I'm not going to. You don't know the victim blaming that still goes on for poor victims of rape. Um, and it is so, I think that was the thing that incensed me the most that you think, oh, yeah, it only happened in the past. It still happens now. Yeah, it still happens. And I, I think that's why the, the the writer of the movie was wanting to present this um, perspective as well. Well, that like was to, probably the strongest one. Mm. Mm. The perspective. Yeah, the perspective, feminist perspective, yeah. And what was really mm. touching was at the end when her mother-in-law is telling her, why are you doing this? Not because she doesn't believe her, it's because from a practical, pragmatic point of view, she goes, I was young once, I was raped, but it garners you nothing. It's, she seems to imply you, you bring about more trouble by speaking the truth. You just swallow it up and move on with your life. And as she continues to pursue the truth, she sort of sees the reality of it especially when she goes you didn't tell me that my life here is at stake and she goes now that we we are with child it's not about the um you know the a child needs his mother more than the mother needs to be right mm. and that's really telling mm. the mother-in-law did say that the truth doesn't matter <laughs> mm. um, in, a pra in, in a pragmatic in the pragmatic way way yeah yeah mm. Well, essentially, the story was based off the book and based off the true story. Yes, it is. So it's based off the last duel, a true story. It's of a recognized last... duel in France, but there, there were some <laughs> small changes in the transition. Oh, um, I'm sure there is. I'm sure, yeah. of course. Small little something differences. is always the same. <laughs> but, the, but it did actually, this is an actual historic event that a duel was fought, a judicial duel, whereby... Um, you know, the the outcome of guilt and innocence, whereas uh, duels continue to happen, but it was more of like for honour and your name and your glory, like someone sort of wronged you, libel, blah, blah, blah. But this is an actual court of law standing one, and it's the last one that happened in France. Yeah, and some of the thoughts back then was also like really incorrect. Did you guys notice some of the... There were a couple of other points apart from... Um, there were lots of things I want to say, but I loved picking out cast members where I go, oh, so the one who plays the mother of Jean, um, she is, I first saw her in Sense and Sensibility, but she she was actually in Star Wars A Force Awakens she's, she's along with her. Adam Driver. Yes, Harriet Walter. Harriet she Walter. played the nurse. You know how at the very end, <clears throat> When they come mm -hmm. back from the battle, she only has a small appearance, but I remembered it because I'm like, I know her from somewhere. And I looked it up and went, oh, she's the lady in Sense and Sensibility. She was <laughs> Fanny there. Dashwood. Fanny Dashwood. Yes, Fanny Dashwood. Um, and she, Emily in Atonement as well. I never saw Atonement. They have um, not seen them at all. Uh, yeah, I've seen I Atonement. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she was the one that nursed um, Chewbacca at the end when they come back. Oh, all really? Injured. And Chewbacca's oh. going to go. Oh, Star Wars. Oh, I know. Oh, Adam Driver. He must be very brave. <laughs> and then another, I don't know if you guys know the same films I do, but you the may Tenio know. Daniel Parker. Um, I Zoe, don't know Zoe Bron guy. Bronion. Don't know her, but I know Very Alex Lothar. Alex Lothar. Oh, yeah. yeah, he, Chow, was, Chow. yeah Al, he was in Alan Turing. In, yeah, he was in, in the Imitation, oh, game. Imitation, Imitation game. game. Yeah. This is uh, mm. wrong spelling. <laughs> Imitation game. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. And Christopher Robin. Young Christopher he was Robin. also in he was also in a French film, but it oh. was actually a lot of it was actually in English. It's called um Les Traducteurs, which means the translators. And he was absolutely excellent in that as well. Oh. Mm. So yeah. Check out that film. Oh, I'm not yeah, a he, he kind of acted quite yeah. awkwardly a young king, a young in this king, one. Yeah. yeah. I think that fit, fitted him very well because I guess yeah. it's for the king, it was just all frivolous. It yeah. had no implications on him. Just all he fun. Was entertainment, <laughs> along yeah. with the masses of the peasants and the other <laughs> citizens who are standing around, watch, wanting to watch a spectacle, just like the Roman <laughs> gladiatorial fights. Yeah, yep. yeah. 
And we didn't see. So who's like, the uh, Jody Coma? Jody Coma yeah, was Carmen, was yeah, in right. uh, Free Guy. Yeah, mm. in the most recent oh, yeah, movie yeah, was that, Free Guy. That's right. She looks so different. In and also Killing and Eve. Killing uh, Eve TV show. Yeah. A lot of people know her from Killing is Eve. Is she the main? Like, is she the one that plays opposite Sandra O oh in Killing Eve? Like the other main chick? She's uh, yeah. Vill- Villanelle. Villanelle. Yeah. Okay. Villanelle. I've only seen like an episode or two. The woman with many, uh, uh, what was it? Accents. Oh. She has All a lot right. of accents. All right. Yeah, these are all the like, characters. Yeah. I'm, I'm Why really... that girlfriend betrayed the lady? Oh, the, the, the girl. Um... Yeah. Zoe, Zoe Bronio is Marie. Yeah, Marie was the friend. Yeah, yeah a close friend. Close, close friend, friend, close friend. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. Yeah. They didn't well, another, another typical example of victim shaming. And mm. unfortunately, it happens these days. If you, and when a rape victim tells someone they've been raped, a common retort is, Oh, were you wearing something revealing? Other common retorts were, why didn't you fight back? I'm like, um, do you not know, biologically speaking, men are just stronger than women? If they pinned you down and you're doing your best, it's not a fair, very, you're not, you're still not going to win most of the time, assuming you aren't some yeah. judo karate martial arts <laughs> master and assuming he's just a normal guy. Okay, what do you think? What do you think? Uh... The final close up on on her face means, because you know how the camera sort of like lingered for quite a bit. That mm, wasn't yeah. that to me isn't the final close up. The final one oh, was no, no. If she was. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But they yeah, were. Was so this was the one before the 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 final final. <laughs> yeah, but there was sort of like a pause, like a camera sort of lingered you know, as we are kind of wondering. Exactly what was going on over in her mind, like maybe by that time her husband already died in the war. Possibly, yeah. I I don't think. Well, assuming it's the what you're saying is the final close-up is post the victory. Post the and oh, post, post the victory, yeah, yeah. And, or, or post be the film before. Fading to black, as Charmian says, that's the actual last. Yeah, that's the actual one. Actual one. Yeah, because the actual she last one happy. is she's actually happy and smiling as she watches her son play peacefully in the grass. That's the last sequence, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. She's in a field with a cast in the background. Oh, and a notable absence, because that means that he's, uh, he's, he's, dead. Died. he's probably yeah, died yeah, already. Yeah. Because yeah. in the epilogue, it says that, you know, couple yeah, she never, never remarried. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah because he only Why? died a few years after. Mm. Why but, would yeah, you remarry if you, all, if you already have financial security and you are living in a society where, despite you being right, men, unfortunately, still wield so much power and takes away your rights and voice why would you subjugate yourself to that yeah so it makes sense that she doesn't remarry interestingly the intention was to the the the, the writer says it's actually it's a very feminist movie mm-hmm. we merely mm-hmm. engage some me too groups to listen to us so yeah, so you know, a fresh pers- I think Shamian actually raised this already. A fresh perspective that uses his story to shed light on issues of rape and misogyny. <clears throat> and what really annoys me is another line where, he, when he's recounting the fact he knows he's done wrong, um, by which I mean Jean uh, Jacques Le Gris, because he goes to his best mate. Well, no, for, before he goes to his best mate, um, the idiot Pierre. Yeah. He goes to get his sin, sins absolved. Oh, yeah. Knowing full well. <laughs> oh, no, no. Even before that, he tells her, oh, I know you feel guilty. Um, Hello, why are you projecting your guilt onto her? 
And the fact that he thinks that she finds it pleasurable or she asks for it and because she relates it back to Pierre, oh, um, she protests as a woman usually does. Yeah. Do you not realise no has never meant yes? I've, I've never really heard of that concept. No means yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry, but no has always meant no. And if a woman does invite you, she will never say the word no. Uh, yeah. What sort of warped idea do men have, really? Well, this guy, I shan't tar you all with the same brush. Um, yeah, well, and he that, did that force really incensed me when he goes, oh, it, it was pretty much... She said no, but she really wanted to go. Well, what sort of weird logic is that? There's no logic in that. But yeah, this, I think this, this is exactly what Shaman said, right? It's an accurate, a thought-provoking account of how women were treated at the time, but also today. So what mm. Shaman was saying just now is still happening. Um, well, it does still happen. There are like many stories mm. of such everywhere. Or and what? I, and, you know, that... like this Me Too, especially in the light of the whole Me Too, you know, fiasco, like high profile men, like you, we keep hearing those stories of Hollywood high profile men <laughs> and these women coming out, right? Or so the it's, whole it's... SVU thing, Special Victims Unit, Florida, yeah. <clears throat> which is a lot of like great victims. Um, I, I, unfortunately, in and the tendency is to doubt the women, woman's story, but to take yes. men more seriously. And I guess that's why we've got these three different perspectives mm. uh, to say, oh, okay, like uh, at first glance, it looks, it looks like the men are right. But then we have her story and it's like, okay, now we know <laughs> like, well, what I exactly the, happened. The public law was conspiring to that. They deliberately went out that day without anyone attending her. To create an opportunity, maybe the mother-in-law wanted her to be pregnant by another guy. Oh. oh, I think that might be drawing a bit too long a bow, yeah. but I suspect it's more. You know how, like the whole mother-in-law thing dynamic. Uh, even in 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 when you look at the the narrative of Jean when he returns, he reckons that oh, did you have a quarrel? Did you and my mo mother have a quarrel? Mm. How how that tends to It'd not be unusual. So if she feels that her business that needs attending to at Saint Pierre requires the whole household, I don't think she will kowtow to the needs of her daughter-in-law and leave a. I I don't think yeah I, I don't think there was anything overly malicious. Just I have a right to take all the servants, and I don't care what anyone else thinks. And so I think yeah. the other two men know that she's a. Alone by herself. It that was one thing I was thinking about. I was wondering if the two men actually happen? knew, or whether it was it's it's like some robberies and it's like some rape. It's not always premeditated. It's an opportunity when it presents itself. Some people will take the opportunity, and it can be anything like theft as well. So I mean, they again, did know that John was in Paris, right? That's one thing they did know. That, yeah, that was the only thing they did know. They did but know. I, I'm not sure yeah. if they would have been privy to the mother yeah, of yeah, yeah, affairs. No, and why not, would a yeah. guy be interested hmm. in the affairs of a woman back in the day? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And, oh, and something else that got me. Oh, yeah, what's, what happened with that black horse and white horse? Is that he didn't want the black horse? Oh, the white horse. He didn't really know. He knew how to write them, but he didn't really know how to He didn't know how to care for, care for them. them yeah. No, no, no. The, he tried to stop the black horse intercoursing with the white horse, remember? Yes, correct, correct. So, he, he was just <laughs> so rough. Half, half <laughs> white horse, maybe, right? Uh, there's a reason for that. Because the well, that, well, that that happens. Sorry? Yeah, well, that happens to the, like, now as well, like, with, like, prize horses and stuff, like, stallions. Yeah, but the reason, James, is that you don't make any money when it's your own stallion breeding with your own mare. Oh, I you see. You've got to sell the breeding rights to somebody else's stallion to come and breed. Ah, because I, I was a bit confused there because um, the, the mare is actually pregnant with a foal. So I'm like, 
was it the back stallions or was she already pregnant before the black one but yeah and so that bit I didn't quite get it but yeah what you said there that Chris that that makes sense to my that answers my question where, where was the foal I didn't see the foal oh no no you didn't see the foal but when through uh the last narrative the narrative number three she comes down and sees Henri um attending to the horse which is you know uh, uh in pregnant. the stable pen, yeah, picked up, and she goes and both she and Henri can tell that that she's she's pregnant and they go yeah. oh yeah and so that's why she goes Oh, um, you know, her pregnancy is coming along, with, I th- or something to that effect was what she said to Henri, and then, and then, yeah, she pretty much tells tells ask him, oh, so why is she why is she penned in? Oh, because the master says so. Well, he only knows how to ride horses. You know how to look after them. So if she's pregnant and she therefore she needs to run free, you let her run free. Yeah. So that's how we find out that the. F- the, the mayor actually did uh, fall pregnant. Yeah. But could the but baby no, be actually no, yeah. the, the rapist baby? The what? What? Could the baby be actually the rapist baby? Not oh, the, you mean the yeah. baby? Oh. Because she was conceived yeah, yeah. around that time. Yeah, around that time. Yeah. That's true. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's, yeah, unfortunately, we can't say either way. Yeah, you have to say, a say yeah. paternity Which test. Yeah, and, and the science back then was absolutely not not correct. Oh, the science! <laughs> you cannot <laughs> conceive unless if you find it pleasurable. I went, what sort of idiotic nonsense is that? Yeah, especially now when a lot of the rape victims end up being pregnant by the yes, victim. exactly. I'm like, <laughs> and exactly what she says in a sarcastic rhetorical manner. Do you think rape is pleasurable? <laughs> and, uh, and it's I, what I also find funny to the delusion of her husband is on the wedding night, she doesn't look like she's enjoying herself, but clearly she doesn't want to disappoint, you know, d- disappoint the husband. And he's like, he pretty much says, um, I am thankful that you have satisfied my wedding night. Well, I hope this was pleasurable as it as pleasurable for you as it was for me. And she's like, yeah yeah <laughs> and you could tell that no and same with a subsequent scene where it happened where she's like nah this is not pleasurable <laughs> oh yeah james little death means orgasm yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you have a little death <laughs> there was well i only learned that because there was an aussie film called um the little death and it's one of those um multi it's a film with multiple storylines and it's all about different people's sexual fetishes um and but then you sort of go well they seem quite disparate but as as the film progresses all of the storylines interconnect Uh, and it's quite a bit bit like this one oh not really this one is more the same story from different different perspectives perspectives. yeah they will never watch that huh I would never watch that show. Watch which one? What show? The one, the that, one that you mentioned. Oh, it's not a show. It's an. It's a. You know how some movies are quite left to field. So it, it was actually done not too badly. It's in. I I say it's an Australian production because all the cast is Australian. Um. Yeah. It was a movie, not a show, and it was ages ago. I saw it at Dendi, mm. and I can't even remember. Um anyone in particular but I just remember it being quite quite one of those um arty interesting films that is both it's a sort of dark comedy I'll just say yeah Yeah. so don't don't think of it as anything explicit but it's very interesting to see quirkiness and black humor But anyway, so yeah, it's only because that film opens with a with a with an explanation saying little death is what people used to call an orgasm. And I went, oh, that's why this movie's called that. Yeah, I don't know if the film was trying to make the point that she had that little death. I don't think that's relevant. <laughs> with, uh, yeah, that's not relevant. <laughs> uh, or not. But, yeah. What what is it with the I think unless if you are asking 
if you ever have a female partner, like your your future wife, and you actually ask her if she enjoyed it because you actually want you are actually wanting to serve her and want her to find pleasure. I find it weird when guys do ask that. It, it, it feels like exactly the reason why, unfortunately, this is why, why I think most guys, well, uh, it, Jean, when he asks, it's more, yeah, I did such a good job. I know how good I am. Enough. I'm sure <laughs> you found it enjoyable too, is more, seems to be the tone when yeah, guys are, like you as opposed to, oh, did you find it enjoyable? Someone. Oh, you didn't tell me what I can do to help you next time sort of thing. That doesn't it's like the same thing if you cook a meal it. for somebody and ask them how does it taste. <laughs> Look right? how good, like how good yeah. a cook I, I am. Bring a cake for somebody. Say, oh, how does it taste? <laughs> it tastes good. It's the same thing. Mm, that's funny. Actually, they end up being a bit too critical for those as well. A couple of uh, very interesting facts about well, behind the scenes facts. There's actually a longer, longer cut. It's but already I can really always long, speak right? the truth in love. 2.5 hours, but yeah, 2.5 hours. It's actually so, a yes. longer cut. Oh, and when someone has asked me their opinion of their cooking, I gauge how close they are to me in how much love I inject with the truthfulness, <laughs> you just say. But if I do not know them that well, there'll be much more love than truthfulness if it is actually not so pleasant. But if it is but pleasant, I will praise it to the If you ever cook for somebody, you will ask how the food tastes too, right? Not necessarily. No, unless yeah. you're like a local guide, which rates like restaurants and stuff around the area. Oh, I've yeah, you're a kind of reviewer. Yeah, yeah. I've cooked yeah. for people before, and honestly, I've never asked anyone or be curious because you can sort of work it out, let's just say, <laughs> how well things have gone or how badly or neither way. Yeah. I've, oh yeah, I've never had people ask me. Oh. So yeah, that's a good question though, James. Yeah. Almost shared an on-screen. I was trying to well out. That was goodwill hunting. It yeah, was, because, yeah, because they are reuniting in a way. Mm. Yeah. Same with the script writing, because they mm. wrote the good script hunting. for goodwill hunting and they both contributed. But along in this the one, they call. didn't. Like, yeah, uh, they, they did. It? They did. Oh yeah, yeah, but not for um, not know. for the final act. They wanted oh. it to be written by a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this time around, they got a third person in yep. to write the the, the from the, the female the perspective. Marguerite, and Marguerite. rightly so. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, all those kissing quite weird, right? First time kiss, like the the lady oh. kissing. Yes, good I'm point, James. That, that is quite strange. Oh, good point, James. Because I was thinking exactly that. That you see the difference in, in the interpretation. Yeah. When tradition. Jean sees them kiss, when he goes, you know, um, greet yourself and bring a kiss to see, you know, how how generous the house of Carouge is. It was just a cheek to cheek, mm. and then in um, Jacques' interpretation, she and him both kiss on the lips, and and there's a hint of a enjoyment there from both. But in her recollection, she aims for the cheek, but he aims for the lips. And she's like, oh, yeah. okay, yeah, please, please bag. They saw that as well. Yeah, it's, like, yeah, it, it, it's just a way of greeting, right? You greet each other with a kiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it depends how you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, that's true. Even even the two Corinthians talks about greet one another with a holy kiss. Holy yeah, kiss. <laughs> well, in, in French culture, Middle Eastern yeah. culture, um, it doesn't matter if it's women greeting a woman, a man greeting a woman, or a man greeting a man. You just kiss. Yeah. And I think for people not of that culture, people do find it weird. And if you delve into the minutia, different countries and different subcultures have different number yeah, of kisses. Yeah. Actually, it's the a, Russians do that too. The, the Russian the men greet each other with a kiss too. Not on the lips. Uh, no, not on the lips, on the cheeks. On the cheeks. <laughs> just like the Middle Eastern men. And just yeah, like not, the French not men. in that movie. That was a kiss on the lips every time. <laughs> oh, maybe in the past they might have kissed each other on the lips. How? Why would I wear my modern 21st century Australian Western culture glasses to and impose that onto them? Mm. Yeah, I can't. I can't tell you. I am no social historian. 
You don't kiss anybody on the lips that's not your partner. I, I think I think that's that a, I think that's a social construct in terms of greeting because we equate a kiss with something sensual, whereas back in those days, even if it was a kiss on the lips, that's a greeting. Yeah. Mm, I'm pretty sure that the kiss of friendship, even back then, was kiss on the cheek. Uh, like I said, I don't know and I'm no social historian and I will ask one if I find, if, if, I, if I come across one and I remember. Yep, no, I'm sorry. Such outrage. I didn't actually know too much about this film, but I have heard that this actually does show, it shows historical events and it adds credence and voice from female perspective, mm. especially in terms of, um, rape and victimization and that's all yeah. I heard um, and I went huh really and then yeah now yeah. that I've watched it I was going yeah. I cannot believe I'm feeling so incensed <laughs> maybe Dude. that's what it's meant to do to, to make people incensed and I, yeah, and more aware of this. <laughs> and I didn't realize how unaware mm. men were but there was a there's an article that recorded I'm not sure if it was a spontaneous discussion or activity or whether it was planned and premeditated, planned and facilitated that way. But what ended up happening was um, there's a group of um, men and women. I can't, I don't remember the details in terms of how large the group was. Um, it seemed to imply that, you know, off the cuff, someone said, what precautions do you take um, as, as a man, um, you know, when you go out to ensure your safety? And then they asked the same thing to women and then they got the men to, to write down all the stuff they did uh -huh. the, themselves. Then they got all the women to write down all the stuff they did. And apparently the men looked at a such a long, long, long list produced by the women. They went, we had no idea. And in the in the, us females' mind, because it's so normalised for us, we don't think anything different from it. And even once I had a good mate of mine ask me, oh, you know, when you go walking, blah, 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 do you listen to, do you listen to music? I go, no, I need to be aware of my surroundings. There's no listening to music. <laughs> it's music. I need to be aware of who's around me. I can hear them. That, that, no. <laughs> but you are walking on the road watching your phone, Shamian. What? Watching the phone. Yeah, you looking at your phone when you cross the road. No, no, no. When I go walking. Oh, walking. Yeah. They still don't get the edge, I think. I, and I try not to look at my phone because... I've seen people who decide to suddenly text someone and then they stop in their tracks and I walk right up into their backside. I'm like, ah, just move to one side if you want to text. And anyway, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, that, uh, I, I won't go, if I find the article, I may send it. Let's see how, how if I refind it again. Yeah, and it was just so eye-opening because, and... As, as a female, I understand why a lot of the female, they gave the feedback of, oh, we didn't realise this is a weird thing to do to us. All these things we do, they're all normal. I'm reading and go, yeah, 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 I do that, I do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and another comment that was brought back recently was um, a, um, a woman was talking to her guy friend and um, they get in, like, she gives him a lift <laughs> and there's, and um, I used to do I used to do this, by the way, but I've stopped because I have stuff in the back, and you'll and, and you'll understand why later. Um, that when she unlocks the car, the guy just gets in. The woman, and this is what I used to do: we check the back seat before we get into our driver's seat and off the cuff and in a joking fashion. Her guy friend goes, "Ha! Oh, it's just in case someone's hiding at the back." And she's genuine, and I I would have been too, and go, yeah, that's why we check. And he had no idea that that's one of the things he'd go, yeah. And yeah, you sit in and you lock your car. They had no idea. 
Yeah, there's uh, yeah, there's there's lots of other little stuff that we do that I have a funny feeling and that I didn't realize you men weren't aware. I'm like, yeah, we do all this sorts of stuff. And and or, what? Or it'd be I, like every other movie or TV show where someone randomly pops up in the back of the car because he'd never check. Yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah, I like did every horror really, movie. I did used to always check, but now I sort of. What stops me checking is I make sure I have something in the back. So I'm like, no one's going to be hiding if there's something uncomfortable there. So that's that's all. That's my current strategy. Oh. Um, and w- there was an interesting art exhibition called, I can't remember what it was called, but the description, and it was just clothes that was being on display and lots of different sets of attire. And the whole exhibition was these this is all real attire worn by rape, rape victims when they were raped and it was all just normal like jeans and t-shirt tra- long tracksuit pads and so it really annoys me especially in christian circles and i so understand yes we we will um be considerate and not be a stumbling block but let that not be please don't blame the victim for your lack of self-control and we're not tempting anything like jeans and a t-shirt hello and I have other bits of experience that I will yes if you want to know I will tell you later Uh, hi James (laughs) (laughs) what did you find it what's that how did you find it sorry what did James say what do you think of the movie Phil what did I think of it? I thought it was good. Yeah, it's interesting. Very good. Yeah, I thought it was quite good as well. Like, even though it was kind of slow at the start, it, it actually was kind of interesting and kind of make you want to know a bit more. Yeah, mm. that's right. Mm. Oh, that was a, curious. Especially <laughs> when it repeated with someone else. Mm. One of you, you see those subtle differences. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. That's what makes it interesting. And that made it actually a bit more interesting to me. So yeah. I find it interesting that yeah. you found it slow at the beginning. I actually found the pace compared to other sorts of film narrative a lot quicker because they managed to explain um, yeah. he's a soldier, he meets the woman of a supposed traitor, and then they get married. So clearly, you don't see that whole lovey-dovey dating. You don't see this whole oh, yeah. wedding thing. <laughs> yeah, there's that, there are a lot that, of time skips as well. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of truncation of narrative, which I thought they were very good in being economical because you know yeah, they just skip like five years. Boom. Yeah, and like you don't <laughs> even know all those details. You just know that this time has passed. But what you need <laughs> to know are the details around the whole rape and lead up to it, and what? that's the only thing they focus on. Have you seen the movie Hero? It was about saving but we found four different peoples. Yeah, Um, is that the Chinese film? Yeah, it's much better than this one because it's just very uh, nicely put together. Yeah, it was about a bunch of assassins and it's in a similar way where it's not a linear narrative. You take, the first bit is the point of view of one, well, no, actually I won't say that. Each assassin provides He's like her account of what happened verbally. And that's what the, and then when one finishes there, well, no, this is what happened. And then someone else goes, well, this is what happened. But because it's it's what they're saying and presenting to, oh, who were they presenting to, James? Either the king or some court of law, because they were supposed to be assassins to the king. Um, oh, I can't remember the details. It was they, quite they are all trying to kill the King, that's yeah. right that's right they're all trying to kill the king but you're wondering did they all do it together or was it only one and you know who's covering it up because we only see it from not the point of view of their eyes but of their verbal accounts so that was very interesting but oh, they wanted to kill king charles is it that... no it's it happened no. in the chinese oh, oh the chinese, in chinese, chinese court hero there oh. were four assassins for oh. Chinese period film. Chinese period film. Oh, was it Chun Si Wong? Oh, yeah. the first oh, emperor. No. There you go. Yeah, um, it's the first emperor. Okay. Yeah, there's well, actually been quite a lot of... It did kind of remind me a bit of Knives Out as well. 
Oh, oh nice yeah, yeah, nice yeah, out. Different perspectives, yes. Yeah. Which there's is different actually, perspectives. Yeah. There's actually been very me- there's actually been a lot of films that use a normal yeah, narrative I'm trying to think structure. Of a few. Yeah, well, there's they're quite oh, a love lot. Actually, love actually, love I guess, actually, disparate ones. Yeah. Pulp fiction. So oh, they yeah, yeah. overlap narratives, mm. but it's um, certain same uh, events are told from different people's point of view. Another one mm-hmm. that I keep lauding, and I know that no one else has ever watched, is that Aussie film. Kill ah. me three times. Yes, kill me three times, and that's again <laughs> same perspective. I mean, same event, different, different perspective. perspective. And oh, with wow. each new perspective, it actually advances the narrative. So you've got to actually watch every person's um, mm. point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, what's in the- Memento is another one. Memento. Which one? Memento. Memento. Oh, Memento. I haven't seen that. Chris, Chris Nolan one, yeah. Oh, all I know is that Guy Pierce is in it, but I've never seen it. So, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Well, you yes. know, Guy Pierce. Um, An episode of Agent of Shield did it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a lot of sci fi shows would have done it at least once. <laughs> yeah. Same with the day repeating one. It's like one yeah, of the yeah, yeah. it's like the day things Jabu that one. you need to do. Groundhog Day one, yeah. yeah. Also, I, but I think that that is still a linear narrative. Like, um, what's that Tom Cruise one? Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. From... No, that that's a day repeating one. Not, yeah, but same not... with Groundhog Day. That's a day repeating one. Yeah, but. We're talking about the different perspectives one, not the day repeating. Oh, one. I thought someone said day repeating. I went, yeah, Charles Cruz's yeah, one is the day well, repeating. Well, effectively, it's the same thing with like sci-fi TV shows. They tend to do both of them at some point. They do a day repeating episode and a different perspective mm. episode um, sometimes. Actually, I wonder if they, when you say that, the only sci-fi TV show that I can bring to mind quickly that does um different narratives is the trouble with tribbles and the ds9 or the star trek 50th anniversary tribute where they oh yeah yeah yeah. i remember what you're talking about yeah yeah seen from uh cooks and cisco's perspective yeah i I think i'll have to rewatch that episode to see whether it is a multiple point of view it may not but for some weird reason i just get that feeling and i think it's because every time i watch one episode like i have to watch the other version like Mm. if you watch the original one and then i always have to go okay i've got to watch the ds9 one yeah well they did did it also in stargate Target, yeah. Which, which, okay. which, oh. uh, uh they did it in SG1 and Atlantis. Oh, I don't think I ever watched Atlantis, but I did watch SD1 and oh, I can't, yeah, I can't recall that episode. It was a while ago. Yeah, it was quite a while ago, but yeah, that was a different perspective one. Like, I think that was like season nine or ten. There was one with the new cast. Oh, okay. there is one. I, I don't expect any of you to have seen this show, let alone the particular episode. Um, there's a really good old, discon- it's no longer in production, a show called Horrible Histories. And that particular uh, troop, crew, company of people who created that have subsequently created, and Horrible Histories was originally aimed at kids, but it's so good that a lot of adults, including myself, um, really enjoy it. In fact, I was told about this show from another fellow adult who liked the show. Um, they have written a, a BBC series and they've just finished season three because I've just sort of finished watching it about two months ago or one month ago mm. um, called Ghosts. And there's one episode, it, it is, uh, follows the events that lead up to the death of this romantic poet. Um, it's called ghosts because it's a bunch of ghosts who've died in that in the in that manor or the estate or the grounds of the manor and they they're stuck there and they relive one Mm. of the ghosts death day and first you see it from his perspective then you see it from the other ghosts who are there they go nah it happened like this and then every time a new ghost tells it uh, new pieces of information come to light so that was an also another different point of view same narrative um, that yes. was enjoyable. Well, there is a, the. They've been watching one called Ghosts as well, which is practically the same thing, which, but it's a kind of a new show. Oh, well, is it Korean by any chance? 
No. <laughs> oh, what is it? American? Uh, it's a sitcom, actually. Ah, so it's not the same uh, one as me, is it? Maybe not, but it's also like guys who have kind of died at different perspectives in a way. Oh, it's not BBC, is it? Is it English? I'm just trying to find it now. Okay, it's, yeah. Uh, oh, three seasons, 2021. Yeah, oh, I think maybe it is the same thing. So it is three seasons. This particular episode happened, I think, in the se- is it second season. I I re-binged season one. Well, I didn't really binge that much because I think I only watched two episodes at a time. Yeah, mm. was it like the recent? Well, apparently it was released in 2019. The latest yeah, the first season. And Amen. you've got um, Lady Fanny Button, played by Martha Howe. Oh, so then it's the same one then, yes. It's, yeah, it's- and it's got um, Tom Hoyk. It's got um, Simon Barnaby, who plays the trouserless XPM, well, PM Julian. Um, Tom Hoyk plays the lovable northerner scout leader with an arrow through his neck. Um, yep. and, and the young couple move in is um, Alison and Mike. So it might be the same show. Is it the yeah, same it's show? It's the same show. Yeah, there we go. It's the same show. <laughs> and it's, it, you know how the, it's, oh, it's, it's the poet, that romantic poet, he dies, that episode. Where, um, yeah, yeah, that was the one, yeah. Oh, cool. Someone else watches the same show. They only like recently started watching it. So oh, so really? Yeah. I started watching it, I think, l- first lockdown. Oh, like last year. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't actually know the show existed until like two months ago. Oh, that, yeah, that was when they came out with the third season. Yeah. So I kind of watched when they said there was a third season, but I haven't watched it. So oh. that's a start from the beginning. Yeah, it's great. We should wrap it up like uh, yeah, yeah. early 1 a.m. Yeah, let's give us a course. Um, who wants to go first? Okay, yeah, well, I'll go first. Then. Uh, I really enjoyed this one more than I expected. So <laughs> I would give it a seven. Wow, that's pretty high. Yeah, high for me, but yeah, it's seven. For non marvin yeah. I'll yeah, give I mean, six. 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 Give it's, it's six. Very repetitive, actually. <laughs> yeah, repetitive, <laughs> but not a good story. I <laughs> didn't. I didn't Deep mind the repetitiveness part. because I showed it in a different perspective, and yeah. each perspective was, in its own way, different. Yeah, and I think that that's the the whole key to the movie is because it is trying to present how a woman's perspective is kind of uh, seen as less important hmm. but to, and that's why you know it's, it's 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 got the woman's perspective as the last one that we see um so i yeah. i yeah it, it's not i think like like uh jono it wasn't a movie i wasn't expecting this kind of movie because i had no <laughs> idea what this movie was about because from the from the poster right it it seemed like it's gonna be like a, a wartime movie, war movie, but yeah. it's like the great, like the great war, wasn't that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this only had like really one big action scene at the end, and you know a couple of fight scenes. Oh, the jewel thing, you mean? Well, yeah, yeah. good stories don't need to have massive action. Yeah, that's they right. Just need to but, tell but, a, but then my point is that it wasn't story. it wasn't an action movie which I was expecting, which was okay. Like uh, it turned out to be quite an interesting one. Uh, yeah. told from mm-hmm. <clears throat> different perspectives and all it also dealt with pretty uh, pretty uh you know important and heavy subject matter yeah, yeah. which is yeah. which is good too um so can i be yeah. honest and 7.5 say, of, can i yeah, be honest me. and say sometimes when it's always action films it's a bit that's a bit repetitive for me <laughs> and it's a bit <laughs> dull i'm like oh this genre again <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Was it linked to to, Grisette, to to the Crusades? The Crusades think? happens after. Oh, after this period. Because it says at the end that that he, yeah. I think he fought in the Crusades. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
yeah, I, was, I definitely yeah. wasn't expecting a movie like this from Ridley Scott. Well, um, well he, he he has done Gladiator and Kingdom of Heaven. Oh, Gladiator. Oh. So you know he's he's done his share or fair share of you know historical epic drama. <laughs> this movie yeah. uh, based on the story in Scotland. Yeah, the France in France. Right. Yeah, uh, uh, in France. Yeah. Oh, in France. France. Yeah. But that's okay. It was no based off the book, which is based off a true story. Yeah. Yeah, it is based on a book and a true story. Oh. And the true, yeah, it's based it's not... off a historical event. Historical event, yeah. Okay. Just before the crusade, yeah. So, yeah. what is Shamian's mm. verdict? This would be a good one. <laughs> oh, um, at least an 8.5. Oh, wow. As an adult. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's kind at of at least high. probably or oh, maybe even a nine. Wow, so good. Wow. Yeah, because I'm not only it, you are fully immersed in the mm. subject matter, the structure, yeah. the economy of narrative. Um, mm. Yeah, and like what you've said before, Marcus, that it actually delves with really important matters yeah. and it's not just one of those oh, I was important back in those days but sadly and I'm so thankful that you guys can <laughs> acknowledge and recognize that unfortunately the same thing happens these days and mm. you don't want the same attitudes um yeah and and because it does tell a story plus um mm -hmm. heavy topic so well you forget mm -hmm. how good the cast is yeah. like every the whole ensemble cast um Famous, from yeah. major characters of Jodie Comer mm. Matt Damon Adam Driver yeah. but even the the smaller uh mm. the supporting cast like um Dame Harriet Walters <laughs> Ben Affleck um, Alex Lawther, yeah. even mother, I don't know who plays the you know the sidekick of of um, Adam Driver. He's he, they they the oh yeah that guy. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah, what his name that. is, but he did yeah. that very well too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah. Like you just sort of went, wow, all the performances are really good, but you yeah, all star cast. Yeah, and you yeah. forget <laughs> about it because yeah. the story's just so to told so well. And on the flip side, there are some times where you can tell the story is really poor, but the only saving grace is the performance of the star. So mm. my guilty pleasure, an example, is uh, The Mountain Between Us with Kate Winslet and Idris Elba. Shocking mm. narrative, overly cliched, shocking narrative. But what saves it are those two performances. Mm. But here it was just so many aspects was good. They even got, what I was really impressed by was the fact that when she was doing, you know how her husband was away and she was doing the accounts and the money? Um, back in those days, they don't have a 10-based system. That's why shillings, pence and pennies, they've got weird 6, 12, whatever. Mm. They counted the way she did. You count using the the, the, the segments of your, your fingers, not your thumbs. So she did that counting. What got me, which was wrong, was... Did they have abacuses back in those days? <laughs> I thought the Chinese did. Chinese. So there was there was like historical detail where I went, oh, another tick. And then there was a historical detail of, I'm going might take away that tick. So <laughs> there, there was, oh, and um, even the medieval costumes, that was quite um, accurate. That wasn't bad, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's quite accurate. Bad. But some historical accuracies can be a bit off. Mm, at times possibly. because you can't always get it absolutely correct but I, but you could tell the effort they went to i yeah, think definitely. that was the fact that really got me i went you tried you tried really hard yeah so 8.5 yeah. from shami you know? oh probably yeah. a nine. Wow, yeah, cool. Cool. Wow, yeah maybe good. not i oh yeah probably a nine if you're nine. thinking about historical accuracies the worst one is in hawkeye the what what hawkeye Hawkeye. Oh, Hawkeye. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah, they could have got it right, but they got it wrong. Oh, uh, the story you mean? That movie. Oh, was it in the movie? They they found an item that was released in 2017 in the scene in 2015. Oh. 
So, um, okay, they got that kind of wrong. <laughs> it was an IKEA furniture that was released in 2017, but it was in the 2015 scene with the girl. Oh, it's just hilarious. Okay, Phil, you're uh, seven. Seven, eh? Mm -hmm. All right, seven. Um, and finally, we have uh, Chris. Okay, 6.5. Did you find it repetitive or? Yeah, Did there wasn't it? much difference in a lot of the. That's things true. That Not, were it's very nuanced sometimes. Subtle, yeah, subtle. very subtle. Um, and, um, and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. we get a score from Jeff? Uh, oh, yeah, Jeff. Yeah. So James says six one. I, 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 I probably agree. With Shaman, this one, this one. This, I actually gave it a nine, actually. Oh, you love it. <laughs> yeah, I gave it a nine. Interesting. And pretty much what you guys said, like um, yeah. you, all the all the key actors, all the famous actors, and they seem to work well together. You gotta understand they're different age, right? Different generation. Yes, um, that's right. Matt Damon and Ben are older than Adam Driver and the other girl, right? Yeah. And they seem to work quite well on screen. Um, it's a true story or, or book at least, and they followed up pretty well in the three descriptions um and of, of course the, the woman issue the, the um, women's rights the issue yeah. yeah the theme um i mean it, it, a lot of examples um, one of the differences was obviously during the rape scene the, the woman one was was yelling in, in, in oh her, yeah in, in her account right but then the, the men's one but in the other was... one she was just kind of neutral or didn't neutral, do anything yeah. So well, now, she was saying no in the men's one but it was a lot less yeah. not muted yeah because in the guy's eyes, she's yeah. the screaming one. She yeah. doth not protest that much. Yeah, that, that's he claims. Like... By the way, the uh, yeah, IGN is what did they give it? the discussion of women's rights, oh, and yeah, they, yeah. they gave it an eight, saying it's impactful social commentary. That's pretty good, though. Yeah, and yeah. on Rotten Tomatoes, is actually very high. It's eighty six percent. Oh wow, so uh, eighty one percent from the audience. Uh, if you don't mind, it's somewhat repetitive story structure. It can be an exciting, well, yeah, it is yeah. an exciting, well acted period drama that leaves you with plenty to think about. Mm, um, so, yeah, I think it kind of agrees with what you're all saying. It can be somewhat repetitive, but if you if stick you with it, it can thing. be quite rewarding. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely not your dating movie. No, no, not your <laughs> not your date movie. And that's why that's why it actually born in the in the box office because it was going up against uh you know blockbusters like it didn't do well back No, nah, it did really badly. So so yeah, I wonder why because it was going up, it was well, up this, against blockbusters. It was up against blockbusters the, and it dealt yeah. with this subject matter that this Ridley Scott he blames the millennials. <laughs> I I must have, as some of you know. I do not hold a, my view and feelings on matters is not perhaps a typical woman. So you guys tell me. So when James says this is not a date movie, my first reaction was if a guy took me on a date and this is the movie I saw. You would love it. <laughs> I was like, this guy is giving points. So no like, what Brownie. movies do you guys consider date movies? Because now I'm really curious. Do I brace myself for more Marvel <laughs> mind numbing, same similar storyline stuff? I go, nah, if this is your idea of entertainment, you gotta lift your game, pal. Or if, like, actually if your is idea of a good date is taking me to a play, <laughs> kudos to you. If your idea of taking me to a date and it's watching a big blockbuster, uh, gold stars for effort. <laughs> Yeah, but, but you know, I the, didn't know that there was a classification for date movies. Yeah. So, so James, what would be a date movie? And I don't mean it in a facetious way. Romantic I'm comedy. Yeah. Just <laughs> quite curious. What do you guys feel comfortable taking? I think a date movie will be something you find it enjoyable to watch and keep lift your mood afterward, not feeling depressed and oh, feeling okay. like a problem with to deal with. You know, because. You want to relax at a movie. You don't want to be so. But you also have to take into account what she. Yeah, what she. What 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 she finds relaxing. <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe she'll find this relaxing. Or a good Ghibli film. Good Ghibli film like fine. This movie with me, she's going to like take what the 
Well, I'm not going to, considering we're recording, <laughs> I'm not going to name who this person is, but I think you, if you know, if you guys know who I'm talking about, you, you might figure this out, yeah. but there's a ma good male friend of mine and some of you who <laughs> does not share the same taste in movies oh, as yeah, his, know who you know who I'm talking about, but he has learned to go, oh, I will watch horror films with her, even though I don't like it, but I know she does. And in, I'm, I'm with him. I'm going, don't worry, I'm with you. I don't like horror films. Okay, let me let me stop this so that you can tell us who it is. 